Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us for another rendition of the BH Virtual Event Space. And we are very lucky to be joined by Sarah France. Sarah, thanks so much for joining us today. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. I'm excited. Yeah, we're really excited as well. So for those who don't know and maybe don't know what you signed up for, Sarah's going to be talking today about mastering the use of continuous light. I uh, want to give a special thanks to Janine and the Stella Pro Lights team. Thank you so much for sponsoring this event. Uh, anybody who's joining us on Zoom, feel free to use the Q&A tab to ask any questions that you may have for Sarah. She's more than happy to answer any of those questions that you may have for her throughout the whole entire presentation. So drop them in as soon as you have them and as they come. Same thing goes for live stream and Facebook. Don't hesitate, drop them in the comments section and we'll get to them. Uh, like I said, Sarah, without any further ado, the floor is yours, take it away. Awesome. I'm just going to share my screen here really quick and get you guys started. Awesome. Okay. So I'm super excited to talk about continuous light. It's one of my favorite subjects. And I, I think it's probably one of the most underused tools that we uh, have in photography. I use it a ton, not only in my wedding photography, but in in my commercial photography as well. So um, a little bit about me that may help you kind of understand this and my background is that uh, I started as a wedding photographer and I've been a wedding photographer for 20 years, but I've been shooting commercial work throughout that time. And uh, two years ago now, right before uh, the pandemic, we launched Shea Studios, which is our commercial brand. So we've been a lot more intentional on shooting commercial work as well. So I'm going to be sharing how I use continuous light, not only in my wedding photography, but also um, in some of my commercial work. So I, I hope that this will be not only entertaining, but also educational. Um, this is actually a photo that I did with a Stella 8000, I believe I had at the time. Um, and this is a really quick and easy way to grab a portrait. This was right before they walked in for grand entrance. I just had them turn around, held the light up and boom, we've got a great shot and can, can keep kind of moving through the flow. So I hope you're excited to kind of see how that can work. Um, I wanted to share this image and a little bit of a story right off the bat. Um, this was shot in Iceland. Uh, I don't know if any of you who are online um, have been to Iceland, definitely give me a shout out. It was my first time going to Iceland. Um, the thing I kept saying throughout the whole time was, it's really cold. <laughs> um, we went during winter to try and, and get some of uh, the beautiful northern lights. Unfortunately, that didn't happen, but we had incredible images and a ton of fun. So. This image, um, obviously they trekked through the snow, got up to the top, and I was able to, to place the Stella lights um, right, one on each side of them, one behind and one right in front of them. So you can see the highlight coming from behind them and also they're beautifully lit in the front as well. And it was so awesome to have those lights for a couple reasons. One is, um, I was really far away from them. It was, it was extremely cold, as I mentioned, and just the elements in particular were very challenging. So these lights in particular, the Stellas that I took with me are um, waterproof in most cases uh, and can be submerged into water and still work. So I didn't have to worry about that. I could place them wherever I needed to place them. They're, they're sitting directly in snow in this case. Um, and we were able to, I was able to see that the light was good before I ran all the way back down the hill to capture this shot. So you can really set up your, your light, your exposure, and then capture such a cool uh, composition in challenging environments. Um, whereas if I had, I had had another setup, it may not have worked at all. Um, it also may have been a lot more challenging to kind of really dial in where that light was pointed, how it was, how it was affecting the, the um, environment and them. So that was just one example and reason that I love to use continuous light. I love being able to see exactly what it is that I'm trying to um, capture. And I, I shoot with all Sony gear. So switching over when I switched to Sony and having the capabilities of having a live view display, 
um, to really see through the eye of the lens uh, what it is that I'm going to be capturing along with the continuous light really helps to kind of pull the whole element together. If you're a new photographer, uh, continuous light is the easiest way to really start to understand light and utilize it in your work because you can see it. So uh, as you're as you're adjusting it on the client, you can see if maybe it needs to go a little more left or a little more right or be a little softer, be a little harder. So those adjustments that you make with continuous light is just really training you and helping you understand how to use um, continuous light and how to use light in general. So once you've mastered continuous light, you have a way better understanding of any other lights that you're going to add um, to your to your collection and to your photography. Uh, so a few things that I love about continuous light specifically is speed. I'll get into that a little bit more. Um, all of these I'll get into a little bit more, but quick quick adjustments so that you can see what it is that you're trying to capture and make those on the fly adjustments. Um, it's soft light, so it's very soft and natural feeling. Uh, it just feels like the light is just really coming in from a natural source. It's got that really soft feel to it and no recycle time. So if you're um, have other, if you're using flashes or things that have batteries, you can run into recycle time being an issue. So with this, there's no recycle time. I don't have to worry that if he decides to um, smash cake on her face, I might miss it in between refresh. Uh, I just, I know I'm gonna make sure and grow and get that moment. So there's, that's a really big benefit. And all shooters are able to shoot at the same time. So I shoot a lot with videographers in my wedding work. I shoot with other, with videographers in my commercial work. I also shoot with other photographers. And when you're shooting with a strobe, typically you're the only one that can be doing it. You're controlling the lights, you have the remote, and you're really the only one that can capture that image. But if you and a second photographer can capture that image, it's a, it's a huge benefit as well as video. Videographers love working with me because I'm considering them in these times and also um, working with them to make sure we can both capture the same or similar stuff as well. So let's dive into a few of those a little bit more. Speed, speed, oh my gosh, you guys, how important is speed in our day, day, day and age, I guess would be the term. It is so important to clients. It's so important um, on a wedding day in particular because you basically have about eight hours of a wedding day to capture everything. And they also need to really um, spend time and enjoy time with their friends and family. So we ask our clients if they wanna come out for sunset photos. Um, we call it like, do you wanna sneak away? And we will bring them out for maybe five, 10 minutes at the most. So timing on getting them out the door we are typically looking for this like blue light time, but the speed of being able to quickly capture multiple different looks and angles and feels um, and, and a ton of different variety during that time and then get them right back to their party is so important. So the speed of using continuous lights and being able for my team and myself to be able to see exactly what it is that we're shooting is really important. So here's a recent sh shot. Well, you'll see a few, but this was from a wedding that I did a couple, gosh, like a month ago. I think they just got their full gallery. So this is one of the images um, I climbed up onto a little mount hill on the side and grabbed this. We were able to kind of have some shooting going on at the same time. You actually might be able to see someone in the bottom left-hand frame. Um, then I ran down and was able to capture this image. I also was able to grab this image and we were able to get this image as well. So all of those things happen very quickly within a couple minutes, the light is continuous, it's ready to go. We can see it. This also helps set up frames like this where you may not think or know for sure if this look is going to work. When you've got a continuous light on, you can really just back up, look, look for exactly what it is that you're trying to capture and be able to capture that so quickly. 
So um, that is a really great example of how we can do that quickly and use and use the speed of these lights. Um, quick adjustments. So uh, this is great for any photographer, but I do feel like new photographer new photographers uh, are just they're still learning and trying to figure those things these things out. So one of the things I've always loved about these lights, because I've used continuous lights since the beginning in one way, shape or form of my career. And is that these are quick, a little adjustments to get this like light peeking through the two of them. It's not an accident, it happened on purpose. They were, we were able to create this moment and create the light just by, there's actually a person standing behind them hiding like this, looks something like this, <laughs> holding the light. And I was able to say a little bit higher, just a little bit higher. Okay, that's perfect right there. Um, and get that little peak of light coming through. So those quick and easy adjustments without having to capture a bunch of frames and, and hope that one of them came out the way that you were, you were hoping is um, such a huge benefit soft light is, I talked about this a little bit with like how soft the light can feel, but just looking at this image, you probably wouldn't even think there was continuous light in it that I've added. It looks just like natural light from the chandelier, but it wasn't, it was too dark. It wasn't going to make the image quite as, um, as sharp as this. And they definitely would have been a lot darker. So I just added in a little bit of of continuous light off from the side. And we were able to capture this beautiful image of them um, with the ambient light that was there as well. So that really soft feel. This is another example. This is from a, a reception just a few months ago as well. And just that nice soft light coming in on them just makes for a really beautiful soft image. Whereas if I was using like a brighter light um, or even using a strobe, it gives a little bit, I wasn't able to back up very much. So in order to create this kind of softness, a lot of times you need like a soft box, you need um, diffusers and things like that. But the continuous lights are able to drop down and be a lot softer if you need them. There's adapters to make them a little bit softer as well, but it just feels so soft and natural. Um, I love the look of that. And that's one thing that's really important to me is having uh, that really natural look for my clients. The next one is no recycle time. Um, and that is, obviously depending a little bit on your gear. Hopefully you've got some um, flashes or strobes that don't uh, cause too much recycle time issues. But I know for me, if there's any sort of an issue, I want to make sure that the light is there and available and good, not only for myself, but for my second photographer. And again, for the videographers that are on our team. And so this is completely lit by Stella's. Um, there's one behind, there's one behind them and one in front of them. And I think I have a little video actually. This was the first dance, same wedding, but um, you can kind of see, I'll play this little video, but you have, a, I have a light coming from the left side of the, of the stage. And there's also a light on the right side of the stage. So, I'm going to back up one second. So we have basically, I'm not sure if you guys can see my mouse, but there's a light coming from this side that's going to give them a nice halo. And there's a light coming from the opposite side. And then I've positioned myself at, you can go anywhere really around 90 degrees of either of the lights. So you have a lot of moving around capabilities. And the nice thing about these Stellas is that they can be so powerful that you can set those off to the side. This is a huge dance floor, but I was able to still keep the lights off the dance floor, still have them off to the side and not only light them for photography, but also it looks so nice for the clients and for the guests. They really feel like they're getting a spotlight on the couple, which is really great. I'll let you guys see that again. Um, so you just get kind of a little bit of an example. As you can see, I'm also a two camera shooter. Um, that's new for me. I started that um, 
gosh, probably right before <laughs> everything's right pre or post pandemic, but let's just say uh, early 2020. And um, that really helps as well, because now I can use both cameras. I don't have to worry about what light, if I have a flash on one camera and not on the other, if they're set up to my um, flashes properly. So it allows for me to have a variety of different lenses that I'm using for first, for first dance, for parent dances, for toes, and not have to adjust the lighting. I also, sometimes if I'm wanting to shoot the couple and I'm wanting to get guest reactions, but I don't have the lights on them, I'll put a flash on one camera and then still be able to shoot um, with with both cameras by turning the flash off or um, just by using the second camera that doesn't have flash on it. So having that flexibility is really, really huge as well. So talking again about shooting with all the shooters that are at not only a wedding, but other jobs as well. This is at a reception and the video videographer was getting incredible footage of this dance. I wanted to make sure that they had not only incredible video footage, but also great stills. So we were able to use continuous light throughout this um, and really light everyone for everyone involved, two shooters, videographers, sometimes multiple videographers as well. And just being able to not have 50 lights on the, on the uh, dance floor and um, around them and everybody trying to buy for like the right spot for them. It's just so nice to have the clients perfectly lit and not have to worry about that. This is from a toast. Again, um, that shoot through is really, really nice. And I look for shoot throughs whenever I can find them. Uh, but sometimes just as a creative, I don't know about you, but I feel like I, um, I am so visually uh, stimulated by different images. Like, and when I'm able to really see it, it's really nice that I just, I know, see that light there and I can just capture that and know that's exactly what I'm gonna get. Um, so I don't have any flash on, this is just a Stella on um, the toaster. The videographer again is getting great footage of this at the same time as well. This is at a workshop that I did. Um, and this is another great reason to use, uh, to use continuous light, especially at workshops, like when you're working with people. And I don't know if you guys have been to a workshop, but if you haven't, I know a lot of those b &H does incredible photo walks and those are really great to go to. And this was just a really nice and easy way to add some light onto her that felt really natural. We backed her up into some soft daylight and then we added the continuous light. And some of you might be thinking right now, I've never used a continuous light that you can use in, in daylight. Um, and that's really the reason that I started using the light and motion lights. Um, the Stella 8000 was really my first light that I used with them. Um, the CLX 10 is the one, the lights that I have now. And I just love them because they are so powerful. So you can use them in daylight, you can add them in for beautiful portraits. And I'm gonna show you um, a couple ways now to use continuous light. We've talked about really why I love it, but I wanna show you specifically the ways that I use it in, in my business. The first one is portraits. So any kind of portraits, this might be, um, this is actually a shoot that I did for Sony when they launched, um, they launched their 135 lens, but the we shot a ton of images with that. And then I luckily had brought my 16 to 35 as well um, because I had never seen the clouds or the sky in San Diego look this incredible. So I grabbed a quick frame with the 16 to 35 as well. Um, and this just has a, a Stella off to the side on a light stand in the sand. <laughs> uh, sand and light stands don't go very well together, but they you can make them work. So, um, so we have it off to the side there and it 
is just some beautiful soft light. I didn't need to bring in um, a strobe for more light. The, the light and motion lights, um, the Stellas, the CLX-10, the 8000, those are all really powerful enough to uh, bring in all of this light. Look at this, the, the light has to be out of frame enough, obviously, to capture this. I think for this image in particular, I use the Fresnel um, to really focus the light. That way it's just on the couple, not as much on the sand. And also because I needed it to be a little bit more intense because I was backing it up so much. Um, and I really wanted to bring in the details of that sky. And so there you can use adapters with the, with the Stellas and that for now, I pretty much, I take that every time. I love that adapter. I also um, am taking the CTO gels with me as well and that adapter. So I'll show you how I use that as well. This and is just, actually, just on that real quick. I just wanted to yeah. chime in there, Sarah, because you were you were starting to talk a little bit about modifiers. And we did get a question from Vicky asking, you know, what kind of modifiers you're using typically for wedding shots. So I think that's a great opportunity just to talk a little bit about the modifiers. I know Stella offers a huge range and I think they also offer some like adapters. I think they offer like a pro photo adapter and, uh, you know, the older, you know, uh, uh, Ellen Chrome style adapters as well. So, you know, what, what are you using in terms of your shoots? So the two, my two favorite is definitely uh, that come with me all the time is the CTO and half CTO. Um, the other is uh, the Fresnel. I use that, uh, I mean, probably 80% of the time. I, lo I love the Fresnel because I love to be able to really um, spotlight and, and focus that light. I'm pulling it off if I really want to get a more soft, like broad light to it. Uh, there's also a, a soft light adapter. It looks kind of like a, a light bulb that you can add on to the light as well. I have used that. I, I don't use it as much as the others. Um, all the adapters are really great. You can use, there's a barn door adapter. So um, barn door adapters I'll take with me on commercial shoots because sometimes I really want that. For now works similar, but it'll only give you a round um, and it will intensify the light as well. So I think those are, those are really my favorites. And I'll say that having those two adapters gives you so much flexibility. But on the CLX-10, there's just a little adapter that goes on to use the adapters. So just make sure you have that too. And um, I also have the Pro Photo adapter for soft boxes, and that works really well on commercial shoots as well. Sometimes we're using strobes and sometimes we wanna use the continuous light. So uh, having that with you is really helpful too. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. Thanks for the question. I love questions. Keep them coming, you guys. Um, so this was a family shoot. This is actually another wedding photographer and friend of mine who came down to San Diego. And I loved being able to utilize silhouettes of the children as well as add in light for the two of them. Um, and really be able, again, to just capture that motion and um, see what I was shooting, be able to see their faces, but also um, just light them up and get, give them the flexibility to kind of play a little bit um, and know that I am really nailing that shot uh, and the continuous light just makes that so easy. So this was um, shot very quickly. This is probably one of the most popular peers um, in all of California at least. And so the fact that no one was under this pier or in the frame at all during this moment was a miracle. And I had no time, no time to fuss around with light. You put it up, you see it, it looks great, you shoot and you get out before somebody else rolls into your frame in, in uh, this area. So that makes it really quick and easy. This is a portrait that I shot. Um, really to show off these lights a little bit when we were at Condo. Um, Sony has a big retreat that they do annually typically. And um, this was one of the models, but all we did with this light was put a Fresnel on it, back it up, 
um, I put it off to the side so that his shadow didn't hit the background, but it really lit up the background as well and, um, and lit his face beautifully. And we were able also to see, I don't know about you guys, but shooting clients who have glasses can sometimes be challenging. You have uh, glare and, and it's so nice to be able to see when you're getting it or when you're not um, and be able to adjust very like live and in, in, in action. So this um, was a quick and easy frame. And also we had multiple photographers. So everybody was able to photograph him. I think he's actually probably looking at another photographer in this image, um, but I just love it. And uh, so nice to work with clients so easily. This is when we saw in the beginning. Um, this image is again a quick grab we had to get in and out of this incredible garage but just adding that nice soft light that looks so natural and also being able to look for reflections you'll see some reflections in my work uh, that i i try and grab reflections whenever they're available so just being able to get that nice reflection there and see that as you're going um, makes for a quick and, and easy image uh, this was this was actually shot with the 135, the new 135, the same uh, same night. Also an incredible, incredible uh, sunset. It just it just kept going that night. But um, this you can see just a little bit of a different feel. So we I had the light off to the other side. It's a little bit softer. It's farther away. We're able to get a little bit of light on the bale um, and grab that really quickly. And this is from an engagement shoot. So we took a we took a boat out on an engagement shoot uh, and just captured some really nice nighttime sky. I love this for for just seeing that beautiful bokeh and not adding in too much light, just a hint of light to really bring in that background. And it it just really makes for nice soft portraits. So the other area that I utilize the lights for a lot is wedding details. When I'm shooting wedding details, um, for you wedding photographers out there, as you know, you have about three minutes to shoot all the details that they spent thousands of dollars on, uh, maybe five if you're lucky. So being able to quickly add some light in. My trick for this is really, um, if at all possible, having a lighting assistant in there with you to hold light, because it's just really easy to make adjustments. So this is one of the images with that beautiful bokeh, but I wanted to show you guys um, kind of like a st more standard image. There's big, beautiful like windows behind me in this shot. Um, so I'm getting like really natural light coming in, but it's really falling off and getting dark when you get into the room. And so, what I don't like is the darkness of that image. This is still a beautiful shot. The clients will probably be happy for it, but I want to take it to the next level. I want to find a way to get that light to be more of a highlight in the background. So turning it around, getting the windows coming in from behind, bringing in the light in the foreground to really soften the image up. Um, so you can see a little bit of like a before and an after. So adding in some light can really make the elements so much more interesting. It can soften the image up, make it lighter um, by and, and really change the whole look and feel of the room and of the detail itself. The, I love it for cake shots. Um, I like having an off camera light feel. So just being able to quickly add the light in from the side and see how you can um, affect the cake, affect the details on the cake. Uh, and in this case, we had the added element of a chandelier. And I love the added element of a chandelier because in, the, in adding that extra element, the chandeliers typically are tungsten balanced. And we were able to soften it up and make it more like white light by adding a CTO to the Stella and then balancing them both for tungsten. So if you, I'm gonna give you a couple more examples of that when we get into reception and show you guys some images, but it's important to know if you want the image to be daylight balanced or if you want it to be tungsten balanced based on what you're using it for. So some people might prefer to keep 
this light, keep the chandelier looking more tungsten balanced. In that case, you wanna add a daylight balanced light to the cake. Typically, I find that doesn't work as well. I would highly suggest trying um, to put a CTO gel on your um, continuous light and then balance your camera for, like for Sony, it's called incandescent. It's typically a light bulb um, on your camera in some way, shape or form. Um, or if you really wanna dial it in, um, you can also dial it in with Kelvin. I typically like that around 3,400 degrees Kelvin. Uh, I love custom white balance. I love being able to dial in my white balance to the exact number that I want it to be and using continue, continuously the same white balance. It makes editing a dream <laughs> when you have the same white balance throughout. Sony's auto white balance is really, really good, but it's still not exactly the same white balance. Um, and I find editing and blocks may, is a lot easier if the white balance isn't adjusting per image. So um, once you start to really get finicky, um, I, I highly recommend trying some manual white balance. This is that same cake just from a different angle and we were able to swap spots. So I was like, okay, light on this side, I'm on this side, great. Um, took about a total of 30 seconds for those two shots. Um, this is another, example in like more of a dark room with some up lighting we were able to add in just some nice soft natural light to the side um, this is a, a cake shot outside so we've got some of that bokeh coming in from the from actually the town down below uh, and being able to capture that i'm always looking for little uh, lights and interesting elements in the background a lot of times a cake is just backed up to a wall uh, so when you're able to get around the cake in some way, shape or form and look for that background to change. That's when I, that's what I do. And I can take the light with me um, depending on what the cake is on or what's going on. If I need to make a slight adjustment, I can do that as well. Don't do that at home, my friends. But um, I sometimes, uh, like in this case, it's a, it's a flat base with a flat um, table, very easy to make a slight adjustment right or left. So. Um, just be very careful with the cake. <laughs> I also love to get low on details and have my light coming down high. So this light is set up nice and high so you can get that nice soft light coming in. But I also wanted to just show in the background that they have some hanging florals that are coming in from the chandeliers and give that little hint of detail instead of just shooting into a wall. So really kind of changing where it is that you're, that you're shooting from is important. I put this image in not because I added continuous light to it, but just to give you guys that added element of thought that there's continuous light all around us um, whether we add it or it's available, uh, I love to go out during uh, right, what I call blue light, um, what I think is called now blue light, but and shoot the venue because there's a lot of uh, tungsten based lights on venues and you can really get a beautiful shot of the venue around that time if you if you have the availability in the timeline. So, um, just utilizing the continuous light that, that is around you either to add it to your image or also to utilize it for the image itself. Okay, let's chat about blue light. Um, I, <laughs> it's funny, some people I think call this blue hour and I'm always like, it's definitely not an hour. It lasts for about <laughs> 15 minutes max. Um, so blue light typically will happen right between, um, right after sunset. And it's usually about 10 minutes after sunset. So it goes 10 minutes after sunset to about um, 15 minutes later. And um, what blue light is, is just, it's kind of a little bit of a trick on your camera and utilizing the lights. And I'm gonna show you a little bit of what I mean. So this image is a silhouette image. It was shot at sunset. It's a beautiful image. I, there's, nothing wrong, there's nothing really wrong with it, but I also wanted to do blue light. So see how the sky is nice and like warm blue and there's some oranges and stuff in there, but it's definitely, it's not electric blue. It's just like a nice deep warm blue. Um, 
So this is balanced for daylight. So this is daylight balanced on my camera. We're shooting at 5,700 degrees Kelvin. So then I ran up to the couple and we added some tungsten, some tungsten balance light in. So this is with a continuous light off to the side. It has a tungsten filter on it. Um, probably a full CTO, if not a half, I use them both. And this is shining directly onto the couple. So what that does is it is it causes like a warm light on them. And then you can change your camera balance to go from daylight balance at 5,700 down to um, tungsten balance, which is more at like 3,400 for skin tone. So I usually like around 3,400 for my Calvin. And then you can get the background that is still daylight will turn more blue. So for an example, if you've ever um, gone from outside to inside and not adjusted your camera, and then you start shooting and realize that everyone looks like Smurfs, that's the right setting. You just now have to add in some tungsten balanced light on the, your subject to make them not look like Smurfs anymore. So the tungsten balanced lights will not make them look like Smurfs. This image is an example of a tungsten balanced image, or sorry, this was daylight balanced. So just like I was talking about um, in opposite. So this is daylight balanced, and now there's a ton of tungsten light in it. So we've got the chandelier, we've got the lamps, we are balanced for um, daylight still. And notice the background is nice and blue. It's like a warm, soft blue again, right? So there's two ways to handle this. You can either add a daylight balance light to them, or you can do what we did, which was tungsten balance this, this photo when we're taking it, or even I think I, for an example, I probably adjusted this in Lightroom to, sh to, to show you the difference. But basically, once it is balanced for tungsten, their skin tones are perfect because we have a tungsten light on them. And the rest of the, of the sky goes, goes very, very blue. So just, to, just take a look at the sky. There's like this nice neutral, and then it goes electric blue. So that is why um, I call I call it blue light. Uh, let's go, you know, grab blue light really quick is kind of a common term around our studio. You can really see the difference there in those images. I hope that helps explain the technique a little bit, and you guys are able to try that yourselves um, because it's a really fun little trick, and clients really love it. Straight out of camera. Um, these look incredible and they're often the photos that I show the clients because they're just, uh, they hardly need any editing at all. They just come out so stunning. And this is during first dance. So again, we're capturing all the moments, everything that's going on, everyone is involved. We're able to get these um, beautifully lit images and really see and capture these moments. The other thing that I'd like to do during blue light is add in other elements of silhouettes. Um, typically, the, I love trees, I love structure, lines. Um, I, I love palm trees personally, and I love these uh, market lights. So, and I love the ocean. So those, the three things in this image are a lot of times what I'm looking for. Um, some other elements that I often look for, um, you'll see later some our buildings. I also love to put a light in front and a light behind the client. Um, some people don't love this look. Some people love it. I personally just really love how it separates them from the background. And I also love to be able to see the dress kind of lighting up a little bit as well, if at all possible. So here's another example of trees, but also structures. So the building here is, this is from Balboa Park in San Diego. And we have this beautiful, it's the Museum of Man um, structures all throughout Balboa Park. So not only just looking for a little bit of blue sky, but look for those added elements, the market lights, the bokeh in the background, um, the other thing I really love about this and shooting with continuous light, I should have put this in the beginning, is really being able to shoot a really shallow depth of field um, and being able to shoot a really high frame rate. So 
you can shoot at you know one five thousandth of a second if you need to. Um, typically, my my settings that I have when I'm shooting with continuous light around this time for blue light, um, I'll typically shoot around 800 to 1000 to 1250 ISO. And then my shutter will be um, around 160 and my aperture will be typically extremely low around 1.6, 1.8. Um, is a lot of where I, I like to start. So I totally recommend those settings as a, as a start. Give it a, give it a try with your continuous light um, and uh, just kind of play from there. I think that really helps. This image was shot a little bit earlier than my typical blue light image. And so I wanted to show you guys the difference. We didn't, we couldn't really tell how dark it was outside yet. And um, we, timing wise just had to take them at this moment. So a couple things is I added more light to them because they would easily turn into um, blue skin smurfs if I don't have enough tungsten light on them to, to balance them. And then I, I wanted to actually see all of the buildings instead of the outline. I love that you could actually see the buildings and, and see how cool they look. So um, using it to your advantage if you don't actually nail the timing exactly is, is a really good idea. These are just a couple more grabs with a little bit of peaking light coming around the side. Um, a quick photo. Again, I love the foreground that's coming in above, above me. <clears throat> with any kind of on-camera situation, that's not going to be possible. And we have a light off to the side coming in and the light coming in from the back. We also have their like lights throughout the venue are really beautiful to see. And I love the silhouettes of the trees. Uh, I, I also love signs. I could have shot this tight and just sh shot the sign, but I love that you could see a peak of the sky because it was still light enough out to get that nice that nice silhouette and beautiful blue sky. I also love if it's an outdoor situation, I'll back up and do the full outdoor setup so you can really uh, see the whole reception, but get a lot of the cool elements of where they were in, in the image as well. Oh, Iceland, I love you. And then this one is a little, I would have preferred probably a little bit more clearing, but the power of this light, the, my assistant who was holding it was hiding behind one of those trees and able to cast the light very far and very direct straight onto them. Um, so, and I was able to capture a lot farther away image and um, not have to worry about the two devices connecting or being able to talk to each other. Okay, reception lighting. Um, let's chat about this for one second. So reception lighting, I, I love to use it for toasts. Um, I will bring it out for toasts. This, is, this was from a wedding uh, a couple months ago. And then um, also great for just people who are toasting and, and champagne clicks, which you'll see um, they're toasting again. And this is an indoor reception because I realized a lot of the stuff, I love bokeh and all of, that, all of that. So I wanted to also show you like an indoor reception and what that looks like. So this was um, that recent, recent wedding. I tried to pull in as much as I could from this year so you guys could get a lot of current stuff. But the soft light on the uh, father of the bride the light on them, this is two lights. So I have one light on the toaster and one light on the couple. Um, sometimes the toaster comes up and they're on a different side. So we want to have a light that we can quickly move in and adjust. Um, but they usually will give us a heads up of exactly where they're going to be. But this just makes for such a beautiful, soft feel and um, really put them in the spotlight as well. Uh, when they're toasting. So it's it's nice for the couple and for the guests as well to see who's toasting. Here's some more examples of just um, how we're able to capture some 
pretty soft, beautiful toasting. This is at a reception. So in this case, I set the light right in front of them. It was one of the smaller lights and I was able to just set, sit that in front of them and say, hey, just sit there for a second. <laughs> Don't look into the light. Uh, and they um, were just there and I was able to light them up and really get that nice feel. This is uh, from the video that you guys saw earlier. This is that exact dance. So I love to create some foreground around them as well. Back up, shoot through people, shoot around the tables um, and that beautiful light coming in around them and also on them. All that is on this image is two Stellas, um, one in the front and one in the back. There's dad again, sweetest. I also love to use it for cake cutting. And I grabbed this image um, from a DC wedding I did last weekend. Um, and this worked out great because they were up against a mirror. This was at the Inn at Little Washington. If you've ever, if you know, if you're on the East Coast, I had never heard of it, but it's, um, I guess, world famous. And it was um, just a beautiful space, very intimate and quaint. and. Um, I, I love how this light was just able to be nice and soft for them and we were able to capture these moments. I also love to add it in as dimensions. So I don't always add light in the front or in the front of the subject. In this case, I wanted the light to be coming in across him to add really that dimension. So we added in some soft video light. Um, kind of showed how the DJ had the, had the party going crazy. So that really helps. The, uh, the other way I use it in weddings is ring shots. Um, adding that little bit of light to the rings. I'd love to shoot the rings at night and um, during the reception at some point, either like while they're eating or um, while, while they're dancing and my second photographer is shooting some dancing, I'll, I'll grab some of these. Um, images. Uh, just to talk a little bit more about commercial work, I use it a lot in commercial work as well. So this is uh, one of the companies, the businesses that we shoot for their restaurant and they got a new, um, they had a new head chef come in. And so we went over and did some shots of them um, preparing him, preparing the food, uh, which just brings in some beautiful light. I'm just going to tell you guys lighting wise from this, we had a uh, Stella coming from the back, like coming across his arm. You can see just across his arm, he's got that nice light coming in around his hand. And that, and we had another light coming in across um, really from like the, a little bit more of the front. So I love that sandwiching effect of um, the lights. You can make one more intense than the other. That really makes for a great effect. This was an image I shot in New York, actually, um, when we're, I was doing a talk for B&H. Um, we stepped outside and I just wanted to give you guys some settings to go off of specifically. This was an A7R3 um, shot with a 35 millimeter 1.4. We shot this at, um, I shot this at ISO 100, 1 250th of a second at 1.6. Um, we got, we ran out in the middle of the street, grabbed some, I'll actually show you behind the scenes. So, Grab some quick, we had a beautiful like softbox on it. Um, grabbed a couple quick shots right in the middle of the street as pe people were passing by and then ran back out of the street as soon as the light changed. So um, it's again, a quick and easy light to use. And here is one of the final shots from that. This is a client I wanted to talk about for a second because sometimes I have a, this client I've worked with for years and she, um, always has a different location. She needs a ton of images. She comes with like a 60, 60 image shot list for two hours. <laughs> and she usually has like 12 outfits. And there is absolutely no way I could work with this client without having continuous light that I can quickly and easily adjust. So in two hours, we're able to capture so much that we would not be able to do any other way. So it's so nice to quickly and easily be able to move light and, and adjust light and set light continuously throughout the shoot um, and get a ton of images created for our clients. So um, for that reason alone, I, I love to bring it to commercial shoots. 
This is another portrait that I used it for. Um, just that window, soft window light behind her, we were in a wood cabin, so it's very dark. And uh, adding that nice soft light in, being able to see how that falls, and it just fell off her cheekbone so nicely. And um, being able to see that in as it's happening and react to it is really, um, really helpful. Okay, you guys, that was the last of my slides. So I wanted to give you guys a second to like ask any questions that you have before we wrap up today. And I wanted to take any Q&A that you might have. Awesome, awesome. Sarah, thank you so much for sharing a little bit of some insight into your work and your workflow and how you're doing things. Um, for me, at least, it validifies my feelings and love for continuous light because I like continuous light because for me, personally, it's it's simple and it helps me out because I'm not very good at math and figuring those those equations out. And, and if I shoot at this aperture and that shutter speed, I should be here with my lighting. <laughs> so, so I definitely I definitely love the continuous lighting. And it, like I said, I, I feel better about myself being able to use it after seeing your work. I know that there's validity to it. So we are getting some questions in here. Let's jump to them. Jordan was wondering, he's joining from Facebook, when you're out shooting for a wedding and you're outdoors, Typically, how many lights are you considering to be the best for that kind of environment? So I personally take two lights with me. Um, I, I used to take the 8000s. I take the CLX 10s now. I have two of those. Um, and depending on the situation, I want my second shooter to have one for details while I have one for portraits. And then during reception, I like to use two. So one in the front, one in the back. Um, and I also, I bring a power cord just in case, um, but I have not run out of battery yet on, on them. I mean, I, and I shoot pretty long weddings, but, um, the more intense and high powered you need to make the, the light, the less time it'll, it'll, it will work for you, obviously. So I haven't had to use that yet, but I just love um, the flexibility. If I do need to plug one in, I do have that as an option. Awesome, awesome. And then Colin's also joining us from Facebook and wanted to know, can you just share your lighting setup? You know, I, I guess kind of diving a little bit deeper into it, kind of the nitty gritty and exactly what it is that you're using. Yeah, so I, I'm using the CLX 10s. I have two of them. Um, I, I have used a lot of the light and motion lights in the past. So, um, I also have used the 8,000s I've used, I had and used a 5,000. Those are both great lights. The 5,000 is basically, um, the least powerful of, of all the three. So the CLX 10 is going to be the most powerful and it has the most, uh, flexibility of dim to extremely light. So the C before I would bring like an 8,000 and a less powered, like a 3,000. Um, and, but now I just bring the 10,000 because that are CLX 10. So having that flexibility was one of the things that they changed when they, when they put out the new kit. When people ask me what to purchase, there's, um, there's a portrait kit that basically comes with a lot of the adapters and the light. Uh, I usually recommend that because you want the adapters and you definitely want a Fresnel, you want a CTO. Um, so I have two CLX 10s. I have a, probably three or four Fresnels just in case. Um, I have a ton of the ad adapters and um, the CTOs. I also have pretty much all of the adapters for when I need them, but those, those are with me at all, at all weddings. And I always bring two, I bring the charger just in case, even though I just make sure it's fully charged at night and I've never had to use it. And then um, two light stands. The only thing with light stands, I mean, the lights, general light stands work great. You can actually adjust the, um, the lights themselves to like go down. They have all of those kind of adjustments on them. Um, so the stand is just really there and basic. Just make sure you've got the little topper in there. And um, then I just swap out when I need to use flash. I um, swap the lights off and I put on 
um, the MagMod adapter that I have um, that holds the flash, and we've got that whole piece together, and we're and we're good to go and and dropping into flash. So I switch to flash when we start doing dancing. <laughs> Dancing is, I, I had a dancing shot in here to say like what you don't necessarily want to use continuous light for. Um, and that's really the one um, area is it doesn't freeze motion. So it's a continuous light. You, it's not a burst of light. A burst of light is going to freeze motion. So if you're shooting a slow shutter speed, um, you want to make sure that you're using a strobe to freeze motion if that's what you're looking for or flash. If you are wanting the softer light, the shallower depth of field, then a continuous light is gonna be a better choice. So I'm not saying that it's per, it's right for everything during the day, but we use it for a lot of reception stuff. And then once, once things get a little bit darker in the environment and um, the dancing starts happening, we swap everything out for um, strobes typically uh, so that we can capture that craziness and get everybody like more in focus and um and really get the the feel of the dance floor so just using the light that you have and knowing when which times in the day that you're going to want to use it is is really important so that's why I, I really wanted to give you guys the breakdown of exactly how what parts of the day that I use it in so um, this is all of uh, the my website, but then the Instagrams for all the companies that um, I run. <laughs> so Sarah France is my wedding brand. Shea Studios is our commercial brand. And the Copper Collective is my associate wedding brand. Um, we have multiple locations and um, shooters. So you can always find out more information and check out all of the work at these different uh, Instagrams or on my website. Excellent. And just just one more thing so you guys know, we're actually launching a new site in a couple of weeks and it's going to have a whole photographer side with resources. So hold on to that website address and um, check it out. And I'm so excited. I was hoping to get it launched before, but we have just been slammed with weddings. I'm not and and with commercial work. I'm not complaining at all. No, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> too busy to to get the new website up i think we're fine but um i i want to get those resources out for photographers so definitely come over and visit hang out come back check out my instagram we'll do an announcement when the uh, photographer resources are on the site for sure definitely definitely and we'll definitely have to have you back here especially you know maybe closer to when launch time comes we can you know do something with that uh, just as a reminder for everybody joining on Zoom, we did drop the link in uh, the chat for Sarah's uh, affiliate page. So if you're still wondering about some of the stuff that she shoots with, whether it be camera or lenses, uh, click on that link and it'll actually take you to that page so you can actually check it out. And this way, you know, you don't have to keep asking her about it. You'll see it. It's there. It's all nicely put together and, you know, we collaborated together with, with Sarah. So B and H and Sarah put it all together. So, you know, it's, it's there, but uh, Sarah, thank you so much for joining us today. I really want to say thank you. We really appreciate this. It's been lovely. Of course. Thank you. I really enjoyed sharing my, my love for my gear. So um, I appreciate that you guys helped put that awesome page together on B&H for the affiliate stuff too that is just so pretty <laughs> and has all my gear so thank you definitely definitely our pleasure thanks again for being here Sarah I want to give a huge shout out and special thanks to Janine and the Stella Pro Light team thanks for setting this up and sponsoring the event for everybody who tuned in we want to thank you as well for being a part of this and always as always viewing this uh for everybody else, this has been another rendition of the BH Virtual Event Space. We'll catch you next time.